What's up, nerdlings? What up, nerdlings? Do you nerd for collecting habits? Do you nerd? We all nerd, do we not? <laughs> We were tagged by Mark the Shark <laughs> to talk about some collecting habits. Now, when he did his video, he also talked a lot about his history with collecting, how we got into it and everything, why he does it. So I'm not quite sure exactly which topic he wants us to focus on. So let's try to hit a couple of them and uh, maybe, maybe we'll get around the bullseye, even if we're off the mark just a little bit. <laughs> Do you know it? I would like to tag them. You guys have been tagged, and uh, like to see what uh, your thoughts are from where you started to where you're at. Well, first of all, if we're talking collecting habits, that's pretty simple. We are cheapskates. So, flea markets, garage sales, yard sales, thrift shops, occasionally pawn shops, those are kind of our bread and butter. You know, we hit those places up, you look for good deals, you follow the you know, simple pattern of tips that everybody else has, I'm sure. You try to bundle things, you ask if there's anything else. You know, you might see uh, a couple of video games or no video games. You ask if there are any video games. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you know, it's, it's mostly just whatever catches our eye, I think. A lot of times we like to take our gaming tools with us for some of the certain shops so that we can make sure that it's a real cart and not a repro cart. Very true. Yeah, if uh, anyone ever has a problem with you opening a cartridge or offering your tools to let them open mm -hmm. it so, you know, it's not going to get damaged in any way, that may be a red flag. I think another habit that we are really big into doing is checking our um, collection app to make sure that we don't already have said item or you have a, what is it, a game trader kind of app that gives you the prices of things to make sure you don't yeah. overpay for something. Video game price charting. Some people swear by it, other people swear it off. I use it as just kind of a general idea. I look at that and I don't take that, you know, for what it's worth as the yeah. gospel truth. That's the gospel truth. I just look at it and say, well, you know, on this app, it says this game goes for $30. They've got it marked at 40. I'm gonna pass and I'm not going to feel bad about that. Yeah. Stopping at a yard sale, but uh, whew, there's some traffic. We've got some competition for deals. Some other habits that are good to get into is of course, early bird gets the worm. So yeah. make sure you're getting up early to hit all of these sales. Keep your ear to the ground. Again, standard stuff like talking to your friends, letting people know what you're interested in. Sometimes word of mouth could get back to you and you can find some great deals. I got, I got your, your back, back, bro. Not just your friends, but sometimes even your coworkers. Yes, very, very true. And of course, all of the online outlets. You know, you got your eBay, your Amazon, always looking for deals mm -hmm. there. And the things like Marketplace, Macari, LetGo, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's tried and true stuff for a reason. I will say someplace that a lot of people don't necessarily think about are estate sales. It doesn't always have to be elderly people with estate sales, but sometimes grandma and grandpa had a game system for the kids and, you know, nobody wanted it. This is at my grandma's house. Your grandma had an Atari? Further along with your habits, of course, once you get whatever you're collecting home, clean it up. Yes. It doesn't matter where you got it. Just. Take the time, make sure it's clean before you add it to your shelves, to the boxes and everything. Just, let's, let's just play it safe, guys. Come on, get into the habit of keeping your collection clean. Stop looking at me, Swan. Now, when Mark did his video talking about his collection habits, he also talked about the history of him collecting, where he started versus where he's at now. And we covered a lot of this in a video a while back with Got G, uh, talking about, you know, just our collection, how we got into it, why we yeah. collect, the importance to us for collecting. And in short, it's a little bit of preservation. Both of us grew up in a time where it's not like every comic book was already scanned yeah. and somewhere to be found on the internet. Not every game had a backup ROM. Pretty much, if you didn't own a comic book or a video game or a movie, you couldn't revisit those storylines. Not as easy as you can yeah. now. 
So it was a preservation thing. It was pretty much the only way to revisit a lot of those things when we were younger. So what actually got you into collecting? Well, I always collected comic books. I, I loved it. You know, seeing the X-Men on the cartoon series oh, was 90. so cool. But being able to have the comic book there to really delve into some of those characters, see characters that weren't on the cartoon or weren't on there for longer than a second. I loved that. I loved the expanded storylines. One day, however, came to my uh, attention that I was broke. I could not afford to collect both comic books and <laughs> video games, my other passion. Looking around, it felt like collecting comics was more of a thing and video games, not so much, at least not in my area. So I got rid of all of my comics and I put all of that money and all of that effort into video game collecting. I thought it was something a little different. I thought it'd be a little more fun to get into. And I knew that if I ever wanted to get back into collecting comics, again, so many other people do, it's not like I couldn't find them again. Look, pal, we got a hundred bucks and we'd like to buy Radioactive Man number one. So why don't you just waddle over there and get it? Yes, sir. And for the lady, same question. How did you get into collecting? Basically, you're the reason I got into collecting. It was one of those things that growing up as a child, I didn't get all the toys I ever wanted or the stuffed animals I ever wanted, but I've always had a fascination with toys and stuffed animals because I've loved TV and movies. And to me, that's like bringing the movie or the TV into real life, being able to have a toy of it. So I couldn't have those things very much as a kid. I mean, I still got toys, but not a lot. And then obviously I grew up and then I told myself, I have to be an adult. I have to have adult things. I have to act like an adult, look like an adult, and blah, 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 blah. Well, what's fun about that? Well, you come along, you bought me a toy or two because I liked it. And you were like, here, you like it, have a toy. And that's when I realized, you know what? It's okay. I can have toys as an adult. I wanna be a Toys R Us kid. Basically, since I'm an adult and I have a job, I have the ability to buy what I want, which as a kid, I couldn't. So that kind of really fuels the collecting purpose of it. If I see something, I like it, I buy it. I see it, I like it, I want it, I got it. That's basically how I started collecting. I feel like I'm a bad influence on you. <laughs> Please bear in mind, collecting is not always easy and it's never been easy. You have to have a lot of patience. Patience is the biggest thing. Back, or not being picky. Back in the day when I first started to buy stuff off eBay, there was no PayPal. You have to understand, you sent a <laughs> check to somebody. You waited for them to get it, for them to cash it, for the check to clear, and then they would finally ship you your you item. You hope they would ship you your item. Okay, here's your $2. Do you have my 50 cents? Do you accept checks? Yeah, from you I will. I've been ripped off in the past though. <laughs> <laughs> I actually relied on money orders quite a bit. I would buy them from the post office. They were as good as gold. So it at least sped up the process a little more. They didn't have to wait for a check to clear or anything. <laughs> so it was that much faster, but not much. <laughs> Can I check? Oh yeah, sure. I'll write you that check right now. And of course I didn't always have the money myself to buy stuff. So there are, ooh, I think one or two consoles in here that me and a good buddy went in halves on. It got to the point where eventually, you know, he would buy his own console or whatever. I would buy my own console. He kept one or two himself and we would just kind of, you know, balance it out like that. But sometimes you would go in halves with your buddies to buy a game console or a game or uh, some of the more high priced comics. Just don't do that with Bart Simpson for Radioactive Man number one. Uh oh. Looks like you bought more than you bargained for. <laughs> <laughs> Even beyond the act of collecting, it's still not an easy thing to do. Finding space is often a big deal when it comes to a collection. Sometimes personal issues arise. I've had a few where I've had to sell off pieces, large pieces of a collection. I used to collect the Squaresoft games. I had to sell them because I needed some fast money and I've still not reacquired all of them. And that hurts. Ouch, my feelings. 
I definitely can attest to that. There was a few toys from my childhood that were my favorite toys, but like I said, I thought I had to grow up. So sold them, now I can't touch them for under $100, and I don't know if I want them back that bad, but I do, but I don't, you know what I mean? So yeah, I can definitely attest to getting rid of them just because, oh, they're taking up space and I don't play with them, I don't need them. Stupid. You're a stupid man, a stupid, stupid man. Ow, you're hurting me. Stop it, stop it, Lois. No, I'm so sick of your crap. Why you uh, always uh, do these stupid uh, things? <laughs> so yeah, a couple of you lacy toys out there. She misses you, but she's probably not flying you in for the holidays. You'll get a card. <laughs> To be fair, it's not always a negative thing. I've given away pieces of the collection to people that I thought would, you know, maybe give something a better home. A very good friend of mine was a huge Pokemon fan. I happen to have a Pikachu Nintendo 64. You need to hold my hand for this. And I just gave it to him free. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay, take a moment. Center, breathe, it's okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to get rid of some of the fluff. I did have a time when I got rid of quite a few PS2 games because I went down that list and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to play this game. I'm not going to play this game. So I got rid of all the games that I didn't think I was going to play or games that I had already finished and I'm not going to play that again. And I tried to focus on just games I was going to play. I think I regret some of those too. Not all, but some I kind of miss already. Or, you know, you're like me and you didn't really, wasn't into collecting video games all that much, you just played them your whole life. So you would be done with it, you would go trade it in for a different game or trade your console in for a completely different console and then realize, now I have a collection and I wish I had my childhood Nintendo or Super Nintendo or Genesis. I got lucky in one regard because I had my whole Genesis game collection and Genesis from when I was a kid, day one store, Took it all to the store because I wanted PlayStation 1 and I wanted the Harry Potter game. The store that I traded in took all my games but told me he didn't want my console because nobody wanted that console. Oh. I felt bad, but I ended up keeping the console. So, due to that fluke, I do have my childhood Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> all hail Sega! I regretfully do not have my original NES, but I do have my original Genesis. To be fair, I'm not sure what happened to that. I think it was one of those things my parents got rid of the, the NES and brought in the Sega. Because one day the, net, the NES was gone and the Sega was there, so that one wasn't my fault. <laughs> yeah! I love this game, man! This is the best! Shit! Uh, uh, it's not what you think. It's not, it's, it's not what you think. A lot of people had that moment in their lives where they would upgrade collections. Like, oh, I'm going to get rid of all these audio cassettes and vinyls and get CDs because the sound quality is better. Or I'm going to get rid of all my CDs and just go digital on MP3 and everything. Yeah. Uh, VHS to DVD, DVD to Blu-ray or digital. Yeah, we, we've all had those moments. Oh, well, pardon me, Mr. Perfect. I guess I forgot that you never, ever make a mistake. Going from how we got into collecting, because it was stuff that we kind of already did, but we shifted focus from one thing to another, or things that we wanted to do because maybe we're grown-ups on the outside, but we're still kids on the inside. The kid in me likes the frosted side, but the grown-up in me likes the kid in me. And taking that through all the trials of collecting throughout the years to where we are now, now our habits have changed to the point of we don't upgrade. If a new system comes out, we're not taking the old system and all the games mm -hmm. and trading that in for the new stuff. We keep all that stuff. So we've learned our lesson there. I've learned not to give away things to what I think will be a good home all the time. I, I make sure I'm a little more confident about it nowadays whenever I do that. I think we're also a little bit more mindful when we get things like we make sure we really like something or we really want this in the collection. 
We also take care of the packaging because when we were younger, we would just throw the packaging away. Oof, and there's talk about that. a lot of times, you know, now things are worth more because you've got the packaging. I think they're excited. <laughs> Old habits have helped new habits. That is a great way to look at it. You know, you want to see where you started collecting as opposed to where you are now and to try to figure out exactly how you got from point A to point B. Look at those collecting habits and see what you've learned from the mistakes or the wisdom that you've gained over the years in how you collect and the way <laughs> that you collect. That's definitely what we've done. And yes. The one thing that probably hasn't changed is we're still cheapskates whenever yeah. it comes to buying stuff. Yep. Hey man, he's back. You're crushing my arm. Unhand that penny or the arm comes off. Just remember to be patient. Building up a big collection takes time. You've just gotta be patient. You can't run out there and get it all right now. Just, you know, look for those gems. <laughs> Well, nerdlings, I would love to hear your comments down below, or better yet, if you want to make a video response to this, please do. This yes. is a very interesting topic to talk about, think about your habits in collecting, how they've changed, and to think of how your habits have either changed because of or from how you collect throughout the years. Um, can you repeat the part of the stuff where you said all about the things? Give the video a like if you happen to like it. Hit that subscribe button. Please join us. We're always putting videos out. And that notification bell will let you know when a new video is out. Also, don't forget to like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Go over to Tee Public because we have merchandise over there. Check us out on the Retro Refresh. And if we like it, we nerd it. Even if our habits have sometimes changed and affected the collection in certain ways but we're good now we're, we're good we're good right we right. can't fit in our house anymore but we're good we now return to ethiopian hoarders <laughs> i don't know how it got like this uh, that wasn't too bad right sure that was good <laughs> was it was bad no oh. i wasn't really listening <laughs> nice <laughs> don't cry don't cry don't cry don't cry that is a man but I don't have my original uh, super, er, ready? Mm -hmm. I do have my original, all right, no. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm.